Hawkins Garage, we are hot rodding my 1994 Yamaha Superjet. And this guy's doing backflips. Welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Thank you for joining us once again, and thank all of you that went to fsmgarage.com and bought the merch, because as usual, that allowed us to make really bad financial decisions with project cars for you guys, and for us. This time, we are playing with my 1994 Yamaha Superjet, and this is the crew from Ericsson Machine and Performance in Freehold, New Jersey. And in less than two hours, this is gonna go from a relatively stock and not necessarily boring jet ski, but a fire breathing, just straight up ripper that I'm probably underqualified to ride, which is good because Nick's here. Like Nick does backflips. So this is going to be rad. We're going to show you guys the difference between my ski and Nick's ski and what we're going to do to make this thing a whole lot more fun right now. Is that motor heavy? Yep. <laughs> but how, how heavy? Uh, 75 pounds. And is it lighter than that one? Similar. Okay. So we're not really gaining much weight, we're just gaining twice as much power, basically. How many questions would I have to ask before you finally lose it and drop it on the floor? It would take a while. He'd sacrifice a leg for that thing. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna stop asking questions anyway. <laughs> right now, we're gonna rip the ski apart and show you guys what we're, you know, what we're getting into. Mark reached out to me via Instagram. It's been almost two years now that we've almost been Almost to the day. Yeah, we've been trying to get together to do this because he knew I have a lot of fun on this thing, but it is limited in terms of how fast it goes. But for me, I'm not necessarily looking for speed as more as I'm looking for acceleration pop. Um, the jet drive is relatively stock other than it has a Solus impeller in it. The engine, is completely stock. It doesn't even have an exhaust pipe on it. And so there's things we can do, obviously here at Finnegan's Garage to make it better, but we are not experts at this. I just ride it. I literally traded a Honda 50cc pit bike for this with like 300 bucks cash. That's a pretty good deal. 15 years ago. And uh, I've been riding it ever since. And other than fuel filters and you know start stop switches and stuff, I have not touched this thing. It's just been one of the most reliable things in my life, except recently it's become really unreliable. And once things become really unreliable, you might as well just make them faster and more fun because, you know, there's, can no, help with that. there's no warranty in here. <laughs> um, Mark has his own YouTube channel. You're gonna wanna go see it because if you're even considering getting into this, which is one of the most fun hobbies I've ever had, there's a lot of good info on his channel about how to buy them, how to work on them, how to maintain them, and what's the name of your channel? Ericsson Machine Performance. Okay, I'll put a link in my description to his channel and all the parts, because not only does he machine them and assemble them, he can sell you the parts to make yours better. Everything from carbon fiber, you know, holes to, you know, impellers, jet drives, what else am I missing? So, I mean, handle poles, steering, aftermarket jet pumps, aftermarket engines, it, kind of the sky's the limit. You could buy one for seven grand new, mm -hmm. or you could spend 60 grand on an all out custom flat water ski that weighs 240 pounds and makes 230 horsepower, almost oh. a horsepower per pound. My God, so, so this weighs right around 300 pounds. Yeah. And what, is, what do these make for power stock? 65. 65. We're gonna help that though. Okay, well, um, all right, so it's a single car, what do they call it, a six? So this is a 61X 701. So this is the newer style. The square nose started off with a 650, which is basically the same engine, but with a smaller piston. Okay. Um, so same crank, same crankcase, different reeds. So this was the newest square nose until they went to the round nose, basically. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is this is coming out, we're going to the newer style 62T engine, which is what is in all the newer round noses up until they went to four stroke. Um, you're getting a 760 cylinder, so it's larger, you know, more okay. displacement, right? more fun. More drunk, more cute. Um, like so your engine has aftermarket reeds, aftermarket carbs, aftermarket pipe, mm -hmm. forged pistons, billet girdled head. Right, um, will it still run on pump gas? Yep. So everything's pump gas safe. Your setup, I built it to just be reliable. So you'll be able to hit the button, start, ride it, beat it up, and then it should start like that for the next five or six years without any maintenance. That's rad because like I, this isn't just mine. Like my wife rides this, my kids ride this, like, and they need to be able to get on and just push the button when I'm not there, you know, and not worry about, you know, is it gonna sink? Are they gonna float down river because it won't ride? Right. You know, 
that's that's important to me. So I'm glad to hear that. So everything that we're doing, reliability is key. So we're not pushing anything to the limit. We're also the jet pump. It's a ported pump. The nozzle's bored. Um, a steeper pitch scat track prop. A okay. stainless steel soulless wearing. So kind of all the goodies without going right crazy. And the great thing about these is they're very simple. It's a fuel tank in the front. The engine's in the middle. The jet drive's in the back. We can strip this thing in probably an hour and a half, I'm guessing, and be done with this whole deal, right? I think we'll beat that time pretty okay. easily. Maybe we should start a stopwatch. How we should we, do a stopwatch. You want to do that? How yeah, for sure. This apart. I love this. Yeah. So we should take wagers. We gotta put a number. What everybody thinks we can do it in. Yeah. Well, let's be real. A lot of this stuff isn't happening anytime soon. You guys <laughs> ask about the caddy all the time. I'm gonna erase all this stuff because the reason you're not seeing the caddy on the channel is I don't have the engine for it. As soon as I have the engine, then a lot of these things can actually get done. But without the engine, without the turbos placed, we're stuck. So we're just gonna erase this. Now, that's not to say this isn't happening, you're not gonna see videos. I believe in the next two months, I'll have the engine for the caddy. Uh, wife's Daytona, I'm, you know, I'm cool with erasing this stuff for the time being and just taking some bets on uh, how long we think it's gonna take to rip this apart. So. To rip it apart or put it all back together? Like, this take, it a, take it apart first, okay. just get it down to a bear hole. Okay, so. Fuel tank, engine, jet drive out. Correct. I'm saying with video, I'm gonna go 40 minutes. All right, so you write your name here. Everybody will just add their names, add their times. Winner uh, buys lunch. I mean, loser, <laughs> loser buys lunch. I'll say 25. Damn, that's aggressive. I'm gonna go with 36 minutes. That seems Whoa. realistic. This all seems really fast to me. It really does, I'm but. Put it down for 28 minutes. You think 28? Wow. All right. I like this guy. Yeah. All right. 12 volt. You said 28 minutes? Yeah. So we're going to set up cameras. We'll put those on time lapse, but we're going to set, I don't know, either somebody's iPhone taped to the wall or a laptop taped to the wall with a timer going. I'll just tape my iPhone to the wall. There you go. And then uh, we're going to rip this whole thing apart. All right. All right. You hold that for me there. Science. That doesn't really stick there. No. Boss, can you move the truck? I think I left the ratchet in the back seat. Which ratchet? Wait a minute. Oh, Guess we're taking the case out of it. The ratchet. Apple, what oh, are you doing? Why don't you okay. sit on the ledge? I'll put something on the ledge and stand it up higher. Yep. I mean, legit, might I add. Oh, dude, we got a two by four holding an iPhone. This is science. I was just gonna say that I would have probably changed my time if I knew both of you were working on this. Well, that's, that's, a, a, that's a good question. So the only things I've ever disassembled on the ski are the fuel tank, the battery, the start-stop switch. That's literally it, I've never taken it apart. So if I help, does that slow you down? I, I don't know at this point. Okay, well we need the judge's ruling. So. It was your time based on him ripping it apart or all of us working together? Because I have no problem stepping away because I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't want to skew anyone's results, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, then I'm going to watch. Okay. I'm going to commentate. Mark's cool. going to rip this apart. Okay. And uh, now, that, now that I know that, 25 minutes seems legit now. I'm going to start the timer and then go. All right, there we go. Look, he's not rushing. See that? He just calmly walked over. All right, so right now he's taking out the bolts for the E-Box. The e Here's a little trivia for you guys. Inter interesting story about this jet ski is I traded a Honda Sierra 50 pit bike and I think 350 bucks for this ski uh, like 15 years ago to a kid from Huntington Beach, California. And uh, I used to share a shop in a complex next to a real nice guy named Casey who had a business called County Construction. and. Uh, Shortly after I bought this ski, Casey calls me and he's like, hey bro, why were you up all night starting your jet ski? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, dude, you were trying to start your jet ski like 900 times last night. I was like, I wasn't there. Come into the shop, battery is smoked. 
the ski was trying to start itself because this guy who traded it to me never told me he rode this thing in the ocean. And the E-Box, which is what houses the starter solenoid and the ignition coil and the battery cables, was completely full of salt water and the battery cables disintegrated, touched each other, and this thing just tried to fire up with the fuel off the whole night. I'm lucky it didn't burn the shop and the ski to the ground. So a little trivia, that E-Box has had replaced at least once by me and then recently Mark sent me a new coil for it because the ski just stopped running right started dying a lot of a lot of history with me and the electrical <laughs> system of this ski you are two and a half minutes into this deal and the fuel tank is already out for the record I've never had it out that quick We're under four minutes. He's about to rip the motor out of this thing. Dude, yeah, stop. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't mean to hit you in the face. No worries. Wow. I had no idea. Is this one of the holes that has the issue with motor mounts ripping out of the fiberglass? No. Okay. No, these are really, really reliable both in general. It's just, it's old. Yeah. You know, anything that's, you know, what is this, 30? 30 years old, basically. And if you're, you know, if you're an older person, if you're, you know, getting older, or if you're young and you're looking for another hobby to pick up, this is a great one because when you crash, I was gonna say it doesn't hurt, that's not true at all. When I crash a dirt bike, it hurts a lot. This hurts less, you know, it's, it's water. If you crash at a slow speed, it's no big deal. If you crash at 40 or 50, that's like hitting concrete, so. But still, I feel like this is less painful than riding a dirt bike, but the experience I think is similar. So, if you like dirt bikes, you like motorcycles, try a stand-up jet ski. They're a lot stand of fun. Stand-ups are fun. It's a good workout. Yeah. They're reliable. Like I feel like the the cost of entry into this hobby is like not that bad. Okay, so I won't slow you down. So the one mod I did do to this ski is when I bought it, it had, a, it had an aluminum ride plate. I forget the brand. Um, this thing corpus really bad, which is hopping. And no matter, no matter how I position my body on it, at high speeds, you couldn't stay in the throttle because the, the boat would just hop. So my friend Jeff Conrad, he had a buddy that made these ride plates. I bought one, it was cheap, it was like 70 bucks, I think, or something like that. And that kind of helped it, but you know, it still hops. So my, I have a feeling down the road, the hull is gonna need some mods because now it's gonna have more power and it's probably just gonna exacerbate problems I already have. But what I'm really looking for out of this deal is a jet ski that where you mash the gas, it wants to leap out of the water and jump and you know, that would be fun. Where I think he's gonna get hung up, I could be wrong is about this. Is the steering this. cable that you yeah, Jank, yeah, janky yeah. fied. So like 15 years ago, I'm at the Colorado River. I've just bought this ski. I've already had the problem of it trying to burn down my shop, starting by itself from being waterlogged. But the steering cable snapped like the second time I went out on it. And uh, I was on the Colorado River. I went in Parker, Arizona. I bought the only steering cable I could find, which was too short. And it wouldn't connect to the jet drive. So I took a part of the linkage off the tunnel ram on my boat, threaded onto the end of the steering cable to make it longer and bolted to the jet drive. And ever since then, the bars have been off just a little bit. I never fixed it, nor did I ever take that apart. So there's a good chance that is seized up because that is steel and um, that might burn us. I don't know, not us, it's, it's him. It's, you know, he's on the clock, I'm not. That's probably why I kept falling off of it. Oh, for sure. Bars were cooking. You never told me that. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. That's why. I handicapped you. Oh, oh, you can't do it with crooked bars? No way. Impossible. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, that's, that was my fault. My bad. I'm, mm. Normally, I would have your back. I didn't that day. I feel bad. He let you down. I did. I'll make it up to you. I'll buy you lunch when I lose this bet by a lot. Like, eight and a half minutes into it. Motor's out. Fuel system's out. He's got the nozzle off the jet drive. I have a feeling the nozzle, the jet drive is going to be out here pretty soon.
you still got a solid, solid 10 minutes to beat. I have four bolts left. He has four bolts left. Oh, I didn't know you had to take the motor mounts out. Although I just broke a screw. You have a welder. Oh yeah, impact might be a... Hmm, does the repair count with the time? I think it does. He broke a bolt off in the hole. Okay, so let's take the welder. You have a MIG welder? <laughs> oh yeah. All right, come on. No let's get it out, come on. Right. Everything else is a part. Part of that. Now, uh -oh. I, I'm, cool. Went, I'm cool with it. But then he went and broke it. I mean, I'm cool with it. I got, I got no qualms. I think he'll get it out before it gets 25 minutes. <laughs> All right. So what? What broke? Oh, okay. So this motor mount bolt just broke. Okay. Yeah. So it's an insert into fiberglass part of the hole. He wants to weld it, which is going to put heat in it, which is a little frightening. You do it really, really quickly. I'm going to just tack a nut to it and back the nut out. Yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, you have a YouTube video. Yeah, I have a YouTube video that shows you exactly what we're about to right. do. You want a stainless nut? Uh, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. OK. What size nut would you like, sir? Um, 3 eighths, probably. OK. It's impressive. Wow. I'm at the harbor, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, pretending like he doesn't know where stuff is when he just organized it. I mean, to be fair, he's at 40 minutes. I have to really screw up if we're we're at that at that point. I mean, I don't want to give him galvanize, you know, have him inhale the fumes. I'm, I'm here for him. <laughs> yeah. Mark, do we need to rake out the hole a little bit? Is that all gasoline down there? Or is that it's, water? Uh, oh, that's gasoline, I think, some of it. Yeah, we may want to, yeah, I mean, be safe. Do you have a lighter? I do. We can see if it's flammable. That's the <laughs> Here you go. Is it? You got one? Okay. You have a fire extinguisher okay, here, get right? all of the fire extinguishers. <laughs> Everybody hold. I find this unlikely to happen, but safety, right? I trust you. All right, that's charged. That's good news. <laughs> that was charged I'd just like in case. I'd like to run upstairs and grab his kitchen uh, Okay, it's not flammable. <laughs> Oh, I walked all the way over there for these. <laughs> okay, let me get you. Do you have a MIG welder or only TIG? That is a MIG welder. Oh, it is? It does. Both. Oh, dude, that is cool. Yeah. That is a MIG, TIG, and stick welder all in one. AC, DC TIG? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Considering my welder just broke. Yeah, that's an excellent option. Yeah, that's... You want a pair of needle nose vice grips to maybe hold it? Or it? Yeah, do you have a set of needle nose vice grips? Did you watch my video? No. Uh, we, just had to, we just had to do what you're doing. <laughs> it wasn't in fiberglass, but... Yeah, the only tricky thing with fiberglass is you got to have the nut as your ground. Mike's trying to slow him down, but Dave seems to be on his side. I'm just over here pushing buttons. I'm even going to put it in the right mode. Wait, the right mode on the first shot? That's not fun. Give him, give him all the advantages. I'm even going to turn on the gas. <laughs> what? No. You don't need to Which do Which one, though? <laughs> You're going to turn on the... <laughs> the right one. Put on helium. Make it even more exciting. All the heat. Oh, you explain like that, that would be amazing. I'm even turning on the helmet there. for him. Turn on the helmet. There we go. Yeah, you want something to weigh it down? 18 minutes in. Do you need anything, Mark? No. Oh, you got it. That's it. Good.
15 minutes in. He's going to make it. He is going to make it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad I should be able to just tap it with my... Ironically, the one thing I didn't plan for was <laughs> breaking a bolt in the hall. Oh, is this the last thing you gotta do? Yeah. So you're gonna be 20 seconds. As long as this comes out. As long as he looks like it's working. No. I need another nut. All right. I was so confident I turned it off. Let me get you another nut. Makes you feel any better, so was I. <laughs> it's a, do you have a 12 mil? Check out the cassette tapes. Good idea, it actually did thread on. Did it? Look at this. Uh, now. Choice. Now you got And do Three we have minutes. a... Do we have a metal hammer I can use? Oh, yeah. Three minutes until 12 volt is the winner. He's at 25. Yeah, he's about to go over, though. Three. Yeah, it's in three minutes. Oh, I got you. It's, no, it, it's if like I go over, closest, I lost. It's the closest it's, without going over. If he okay. goes over, if he goes over 25, he loses. If he goes over 28, then you win. If he goes over 30, then it's Nick. That sounds good. Do you have krill oil or PB blaster or something like that? Thank you, sir. That's what I... Come okay. on. Two minutes. You know your own time. There we go. Is it working? I don't know. Yeah. See, I did that intentionally. I wanted to get closer to the time. <laughs> 23 minutes, 27 seconds. Mark is our winner. And he has just won himself. Five guys, burgers and fries. I'll go place the order. So here's the major components of what we're changing. This is the new engine. This is the new jet drive. This is our old jet drive. Uh, Mark told me the way you install these is basically you work from the back of the boat and move forward. You need to mount the pump to align the input shaft with the intermediate shaft, then you align the motor to that. So major differences between the new pump and the old pump are this. Uh, this has a larger exit diameter. It's been bored out. The casting flaws have been removed by porting the inside of it. It has a different impeller and it's set up for having not one but two cooling lines. Is there anything, anything more I need to know? Um, the other question I have is, let's say a guy has a stock pump, wants to mod it, can he send it to you to have all this done? And what's, yep. that, what's that cost? So blueprinting the pumps, you know, 125 bucks to blueprint the pump. Okay. Um, rebuilding everything, you're probably around 250 for cleaning it, getting it all together. Okay. This we ended up, so stock, they come with a wear ring that it's stainless steel on the inside with aluminum housing. In freshwater, it's totally fine, but in saltwater, 
you end up getting corrosion between the stainless steel and the aluminum, and it swells, and then it hits the prop, and it locks up. This, Solus redesigned it, where it is a solid stainless steel piece. So there's nothing that can corrode inside of it. Uh -huh. It'll last you forever. Okay. So um, that's the main difference on that. As you said, we have it set up for dual cooling. Um, you know, anytime you're making power, power makes heat. So we gotta cool it. Best way to do that is have more water running through it. And so that's where it goes here in the cylinder head? So cooled the way the what? cooling system works on this is reverse cooled. So these are the main cooling lines. So this is what will be coming off of the pump. So the coolant, well, water, will run through the, the exhaust manifold. Oh, the exhaust manifold. It will fill the intake. cylinder and then come out the head. Uh, uh, all right. So, and then we will run this one. It will run down to the bottom of the pipe. Mm -hmm pressurize the pipe, which water is then injected into the exhaust, mm -hmm. which helps tune the exhaust, oh. and then the rest of the water goes overboard. Oh, okay. So, and then we'll also have a stinger valve at the back, which will open and close to fill and dry out your water box so that you have more bottom end hit, wow. which is what you said you wanted. Yeah, dude, that's so, great. This little thing will be a ripper. Oh my God, I can't wait to experience this. <laughs> and so, oh, one last question I have is I've yep. seen stand-ups, Nick's got one, yep. where it has an adjustable nozzle. Is that something that can be added to this jet driver, or do you have to buy a whole Correct. Jet so we would replace the reduction nozzle okay. to a trim reduction nozzle. Mm -hmm. Technically, we could weld bungs on this and set up a trim ring on it, but yeah, it could be added. And then Nick has one that flips up for doing backflips. They also have one that flips down for racing, Hold so that, that when you go around, well, it's more for when you go around a corner, I'll you can stab the nose, the nose and... down so that you can get bite to go around a corner. Dude, so it's all the same stuff as like a full-size jet boat, just way less expensive. Right. Like he was like, yeah, $125 to go through there and port this and blueprint this, and I'm like, <laughs> wow, that is cheap. That is. So wow. yeah, they're they're not bad. I mean, these stand ups, as you said, you've had it what fifteen years. As right. long as you take care of them, they last and they really hold the value. Honestly, you could probably sell it for more now than when you bought it then. Yeah, yeah, that that market is incredible right now. How expensive stuff is. So since they've switched from two stroke to four stroke, yeah. all the guys love the two stroke stuff. That's why I I ran out and bought a twenty twenty or. 2019, whatever it was. I think it's 2020. 2020. I ran out and I searched 13 dealerships to find one because I knew the four-stroke was going to be bigger. It was going to be heavier, and I went. I went out and bought that, and then I rode the four-stroke Superjet and went. This thing's great too. I really enjoyed it. It's just a different kind of great. You know? They're both awesome. Yeah. The the main downside, the four strokes are way more reliable. The engines last longer. Mm -hmm. But one thing with stand-ups in particular, you sink them. Like it's, it's part of it. If you sink a four-stroke, you're going to do five or six oil changes to get the water out of the oil. Right. If you sink a two-stroke, I can have it fired back up in about 20 minutes, and then you could be riding and no worse for wear, really no issues, especially in fresh water where like you don't have to worry about salt. Right. So both yeah. are amazing. You yeah. know, the four strokes, there's nothing that goes faster than a four stroke stand up. Right. Um, you know, there's guys in the 70s with it, you know, upper 60s, lower 70s on those things. Um, it's awesome. insane. Yeah. I mean, and it's just a good riding ski. I just enjoyed it. Like it was just fun to carve and fun to ride. And anyway, we don't have one of those here, so let's make this one better. <laughs> <laughs> so jet drive goes in next then. Yeah, that's the next thing. We'll start putting the jet pump in get it aligned and go from there.
JB Marine Weld. Okay, so that's what we needed for the bottom of your wife's boat, right? For the, uh, for for the bilge pump. We use, yeah. use, we use silicone, remember? So 5200 will also work. Um, the main reason I went with this stuff is one, it works great, and two, it dries in five minutes, so we can ride it today. Is this motor compared to the old one? So the old one's 701 cc's. Right. This one is 760. Ooh! Four cubes. And it just goes into this coupler and then sits on the mounts? Yep. So we're just setting it to align it at the moment. How do we keep the wires from every... Well, they will go over the housing when we're done. Ah, okay. So let's throw Dude, that's the bolts in it. Cooler looking than the old one. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's also got your name on it. Not even that, it's just, you know, the air cleaners, the billet girdle, it all just says, I mean business. Just hold on. Yep. Oh, wow, there's all kinds of play in this too, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, there's play everywhere in this. So we want this to make it even, so this is gonna to have to come up a little bit. So this will come up to make that even. Gotcha. So that's right now all we're going to do is we're going to put the shim so it's even without the coupler. And then when we put the coupler in, we know how many shims so it all sits right. And that coupler will shimmy the motor into place where it needs to be. But you don't bottom out the coupler, right? No, you don't hole, bottom out the, the coupler. It's going to flex. Correct. And close the gap. And yep. Yeah, so you leave a little bit of a gap. It's just like a drag. Yeah, that's what it's literally like a drag. Oh, there you go. It's basically the same thing, just a smaller engine and smaller pump. What are you doing right now? So I'm just making the distance between the couplers a little tighter. There's a 2,000, a two millimeter variance that they can be. And on that boat, there'd be a little bit too much of a gap. So I'm just setting it so everything fits as perfectly as we can. How do you lock that in from moving front to back? When one it's a press fit. So after it's set, it really doesn't move. Okay. So, and of course, everything jet ski is metric. Yeah, that's hard. That hurts my brain. The whole metric thing. Yeah, it's just... It's like three quarters of an inch to me. <laughs> I am a human. It's going to go seven-eighths on that. From here to here? That's seven-eighths, almost an inch. No way, bro. So, right now, it, it's just under three quarters of an inch. See? Suck it. See? <laughs> Damn it. You don't have your glasses on. That's why I'm on. He's right.
Where's oh, the pipe? Shiny parts going on? You didn't polish that first? It was polished. Oh, this boy. was in the salt water to tune it. And Shiny parts going on. So is this something you make? So no, this is basically unobtainium. Is this the... So this is a factory B pipe. I was gonna ask, is this the... This is the pipe that... I, no you always hear that term online. I only recently found out what it actually means, you know. Yeah, so this is a B pipe. There's a company called Factory Pipe that make exhausts for all kinds of things. This jet ski market is about this big, so it's not often they make a run of these, and when they do, they are all sold, you know. So since... Let's call it the sickness yeah. that went on. Yeah. Factory Pipe got delayed on their OEM stuff. They make stuff for Polaris and stuff like that. Right. So they got so backed up with that, they couldn't make the toy pipes for us. Yeah. So For all 150 of the people in the country that were. Right, things. exactly. So <laughs> now this pipe went from a $700 pipe new to like a $1,300 pipe used. Jeez. Um, Wow. So, yeah. There's a lot to it. I mean, there's a cast piece and I mean, yep, Yeah, no, it's the exhaust manifold. Yeah. This and then the chamber. Yeah. Dude, it's a great pipe and it's really the best way to add horsepower to these. Yeah, and, I mean, there's a lot to it too. When you look at it, it's not like Where's the Where's like the like look at how it changes shape, you know. It comes out of the manifold here, gets bigger expand some more, then gets really small to go out like. Right, and that. That's that, just a tune velocity. You yeah, know? and this shape is to fit around the gas tank. Uh, so not okay. only that, then it's also got to fit in the area so you don't have to modify everything for it. Right. So this is the stock pipe right here. Oh, geez, okay. So this is the stock exhaust manifold, the head pipe, which is that bullhorn, and then this is the chamber, which on this would be considered a bread box. So, but this isn't a tune pipe, that is. Right. Does this fit an FX1? Yep. Well, there you go. This is the critical part. This is the, yeah, we, we don't want to rush, rush this, this part. part. Exactly. Uh, you don't want to rush putting the shiny parts on. So the billet part's a head girdle. That's not the cylinder head, right? No, so... What does it need a girdle for? So what ends up happening, one, we grind the inside of the ports okay. to reshape them for them to flow better. Mm -hmm. And basically, the cylinder on a two-stroke is kind of like your cam. Right. So where the ports sit mm -hmm. is the port timing, which makes it more bottom end, more top end, so on and so forth. Okay. When we start grinding them, mm -hmm. it thins the casting in certain spots. Uh, so if you don't yeah. girdle the head, you can crack a water jacket. Okay. So one, we're hanging a heavier pipe that's not linked to the head, so we girdle it. Just makes us be able to run more compression safely and not have headaches. What is the compression ratio of this? Um, the compression ratio, it doesn't sound impressive. It's 180 PSI. Okay. Um, that's the cranking it, compression? That's cranking compression. Okay. 180 is a lot. I mean, what are, these are stock, like 150 normally? 140 to 150, depending yeah. on what 701 it is. That's a big bump. And I can still buy crappy pump gas. Well, well that's convenient. Good pump well, gas. Well, good pump gas. Not yeah. crappy pump yeah. gas. Well, I'm getting ready to build a turbo, a supercharged ski, a two stroke on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Just because I've done it before and people say it can't be done. So, can't do a supercharger? Or just a turbocharger? It's going to be a supercharger. Okay. But a lot of people think you can't supercharge and turbocharge two strokes. Oh. Um, which isn't true. So, I right. figure do a cool video with it on the dyno and. Yeah.
So this is a flow control valve. So the way the water routing works on this is the water runs from the jet pump to the exhaust manifold, then through the engine and out these fittings. This side runs to the bottom of the pipe, which then sprays water inside the pipe, then comes back out. And as it comes out, we have this in line, which goes to the stinger. So as when you're at idle, this basically shuts off because you're not getting the jet pump pressure to open it. Okay. So it'll dry the water box out and help you with bottom end. At idle. At idle, and then when you get on it, as the pressure builds, then they'll start spraying. So it's not a water jacketed exhaust. There's water going through the exhaust. There's water going through the exhaust. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's three points, one here, one here, and one at the bottom that you can't see. And is that to keep the exhaust from melting everything? So yes and no. Okay. So one, yeah, it's to keep this silicone coupler still alive. Okay. Um, two, the way a two-stroke works is with resonance, sound waves, okay. inside the pipe. So basically, the sound waves bounce back and forth and will shut one of the two cylinders because they're opposed, they're 180 degrees apart. Uh, okay, okay. Which is why you can run a single pipe on a two cylinder because they're 180 degrees apart. Okay. So the water slows down or speeds up the sonic waves depending on how much water you're spraying in it to tune the exhaust basically. Whoa. My head hurts. I can't. <laughs> and without a dyno, you just tie it down in the water and go wide open. Pretty much. So, I which wait. I also I have a that. dyno. The tricky thing with two stroke engines on dynos, they don't like them. Okay. So when you really try to push it to get max horsepower, they blow up. Oh. So you can tune them so that they're 85%, basically, mm -hmm. and then you can compare everything to see, hey, I'm making more power, hey, I'm not making more power. Right. But if you try to output all the beans, mm -hmm. you're gonna lock them up more times than not. Oh, wow, okay. So, which is why I only dyno to test stuff instead of customer stuff. So are we gonna strap this to the trailer, back the trailer in the water, and just go, oh, yeah. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> this is gonna make as much power as a Honda out of two cylinders. Like, Pretty close. 100, 130 horsepower. It had, what did you say, 60 or 70 stock? Yeah, around 70, 65 I think it was. It has more power than every mini truck I've ever owned. <laughs> They're doing fuel lines right now. I'm gonna put fuel in it. And then it's, it's ready to start making brap noises. Yeah, it's time to test fire it and then put it back on the trailer. Actually, we'll put it back on the trailer and then test fire it outside. So we'll uh, smoke out the whole shop. Why not? That's part of the fun, no? Oh, no, no. <laughs> My wife's Italian. I try not to smoke out the shop if I can <laughs> avoid it. Yeah. You want to come back here? For <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, so we'll put it back on the trailer, take it outside, <laughs> then we'll is. fire it, then we'll go to the lake. That's why I never Not do that all. high. Well, you're like all the way up. I'm like, all right, I'll, well, I've never done this, but I'll keep going. <laughs> Stop before it overflows. That's um, well, you can't tell. Like that's uh, the thing. Is, the, the reason I always stop down there is like you can't See, tell. See, I, I never use a funnel. I use the the filler neck, uh, so you can see when that's getting full. Well, we are topped off now. So I mean, ready to test. Right there is the most fuel you can put in it. So you're perfect. Now I know. <laughs> What we got? So just to show you for comparison, see, so this is the piston that's in Mike's motor. So it's a forged Wasner piston, uh, 90, uh, 84 millimeters. And in Nick's motor, this is a 95 millimeter piston, but you can see the difference in them. You literally fit the one piston inside the other. Dang. So, you know, you can see the, the difference and the old adage, there's no replacement for displacement comes true with big slugs. That's pretty cool. So this is a thousand cc power valve, 10 mil stroker. So it's basically the same motor that's in Mike's ski, um, but the crank has been stroked. So the crank has 10 millimeters more stroke. His is 68 millimeters, this is 78. Um, the stock super jet that Mike had, it's 81 millimeter bore. His new motor is 84 millimeter bore. This is 94 millimeter bore. So significantly larger, both bore and stroke. Um, and it's power valve, which 
allows it to basically have better bottom and top end at the same time. So it's all fabricated either by me or by Nick, polished by Nick, ridden by Nick. <laughs> yeah, we made uh, a lot of things. Everything's custom in it. Gas tank was totally made with cardboard and then made out of aluminum and then remade to fit this exhaust pipe. Water box. Water box is made. So, and that's designed to not allow water to go back in. Yeah, a nice homemade splash guard out of a Dasani bottle. Had to keep my roots strong, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's nothing like having a $30,000 jet ski with a soda bottle. So, and it's cool because it runs on pump gas. You can beat it up. What kind of power does this make? 180 horsepower-ish, 170, 180. Um, this is still super practical compared to what we can build. So this is a thousand cc's, we build them to 1200, so 200 cc's more. Uh, so we stroke them a little bit more. Um, the pistons basically say the same, we just go with a longer stroke. Um, and there's different ignitions we can run on it, run more timing, and run significantly more compression. So this is running normal pump gas, um, around 180 PSI compression, just like Finnegan's boat. Uh, we'll bump these up to 240 PSI and run you know, 116 octane race fuel with it um, and set it on kill. But you can just do a 180 and hit the throttle and the trim on this and it'll go around. You'll see when the two skis are next to each other, this boat is significantly wider and much shorter. Um, these aren't really designed to ride around and have fun, they're designed to do tricks. Um, if you wanna ride around and have fun, you know, super jets, stuff like that. Um, there's some other aftermarket hulls that are longer for surf riding, which are also great boats, but this is really a flat water freestyle weapon. All right. We're outside the garage. That was record time for an engine and drivetrain swap in anything, <laughs> I believe. And so uh, this will be the first startup. Before we do it, I have questions. Okay. Because I'm a jet boat guy. We don't have a garden hose hooked to anything. Correct. Do you have to have water going through the pump at all? Do you have so, to have water going through the motor? To fire it up and mm -hmm. test it, no. Okay. To run it, yeah. yes. Okay. So we're not... We're just making sure everything's running and firing up. You know, running it for 10, 20 seconds isn't going to do anything. Okay. Prolonged running it, it's an issue. Bad deal, all right. Um, so, so, but like this doesn't have a water pump like a boat has where the rubber pump will dry up, something like that. Okay. It's all pressure through the pump. Okay. So if there's no water going through it, obviously it's not going to be cooled, but right. it's not going to damage anything either. Okay. Unless obviously you let it get too hot. Sweet. So the way the jet pump works is there's the impeller section with a wear ring, the stator section with ha which has the veins, which straightens out the flow, and then the reduction nozzle, which starts to build pressure. So that reduction nozzle is what creates all the line pressure for the rest of the cooling system. So as long as water's flowing through the pump, water's flowing through the motor. So. That's the best explanation of it I've ever heard. Oh, that cool. makes sense. You wanna uh, press the green button? Yeah, first we gotta take the flame arresters off and choke it for a second. Okay. Because it's new and all the lines are dry. Got it. Now it has a primer, does that thing work pretty good? It used to, like Yeah, no, the primer will work great, but we put all brand new fuel lines. So there's nothing so in the So there's primer. nothing in anything. Okay. And how does a fuel pump, sorry, I know you want to do nope. this. I just so full of questions. <laughs> how does a fuel pump in this thing actually work? So it works off of pulse. So because it's a two stroke and there's reed valves, the piston goes up and down, which creates a suck and a blow. Yep, yep. So there's a pulse line running to the fuel pump and there's a diaphragm. So when the suck happens, it pulls it through one diaphragm into another diaphragm, mm -hmm. and the next pull pulls it through the other one, and that's uh, how it makes it. It's basically two check valves and a diaphragm that it flows through. And it's just sucking. And it's just suck, blow, suck, blow, Dude. suck, blow, and that's, it's a super simple pump, but it works. Yeah, great. yeah. So. Ooh. Okay, now you can push the green button. Are we sure? No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, go ahead. Oh, it wants to run. You can see well, the fuel. I, I ran it. Dude, we got blue fuel lines. You can see the fuel. Yep. Oh, 
<laughs> that is spicy. I love it. It's so, uh, it's got a good exhaust note. Yeah. So now it's ready to take to the water. Let's go to the lake. Yeah. Let's time to time lake. to go get wet. I'm gonna go put trunks on. We're gonna hitch this up to the mule. We're going to the water. Sounds God, good. Oh man, that's cool. So what's about to happen here is we know it runs, we just don't know if it's tuned properly. So Mark is gonna fire it up with it attached to the trailer and pin it wide open basically. Right, uh, so basically to load it like you're loading a dyno, yeah. put it under load with the pump underwater. Yeah, the pump is in the water, the pump will have a full load of water, it's gonna shoot a fire hose that way. And it has a good chance of pushing the mule out of the water. I don't know, I'm gonna get out of the way and uh, let him do his thing here. And then I guess you're gonna do that, pull spark plugs and look at them? Yep. Love it. Out come the spark plugs. I'm trying not to slip and drop my phone in the lake. So, is it any different than uh, reading four stroke stuff? It's fairly similar. Okay. Um, I have a video on it as well, but you're basically looking for the strap to be brown. Um, at the moment, we're pretty rich, yeah. so we'll end up... Yeah, that didn't take long to get those all sooty. Right, so we'll end up start turning it in. I always set them up a little bit rich because you don't blow them up rich, you blow them up lean. So... Got it. Way better to be safe than sorry. So... So in my stuff, I'd be looking for a fuel ring down at the bottom of the porcelain. Right. You know, something Yeah, so something we don't find. have to cut these plugs to look at them. Like normally you drill out the back to look all the way down at the base. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do that. We can do most of the reading right at the top. Ah, of the top all right. Which makes it easier. Sweet. And so now, what are your adjustments then? So now, on these carburetors, there's idle adjustment, which okay. is here. Yeah. There's low speed adjustment, which is off idle. Mm -hmm. And then high speed adjustment, which is at the top. Okay. At the back of the carburetor. Got it. That 2020 from the factory, it's, we haven't touched this stock. You fire it up and you basically have to let the thing warm up for like two minutes, otherwise it will not go. And the, uh, the downside with the newer Super Jets is they press in a brass plug to make them non-adjustable carburetors. Yeah. So for you to be able to adjust them, you basically have to drill that plug out and then add a T-handle because this flathead on the screw is so tiny, you can't yeah. get anything to adjust it. So they make it so people don't mess with them, right. but it also makes it where you can't get them running perfect yeah. either. No, and it, cause it, not only do you have to wait for it to wait two minutes to warm up, but it also has just a little hesitation on the bottom end, just right. a little bit, just enough to make it where if you're learning to ride and you don't get through that spot, you fall over. Right. Well, we can fix that. Oh yeah. Another video, another yep. time. <laughs> Let's go for pool number two. All right. So 
Which direction did you go? You leaned. So out we're leaning like, it out. We're still gonna keep leaning it out. It sounds smoother now. Yeah, we're getting, we're going in the right direction. Cool. So also, where I had set this up, we're at sea level and you're at 850 feet, about. Ah. So the elevation change affects it a little bit. Got it. The new ski, twice the power it had before. It's very possible I go over the bars today. <laughs> Love you, baby. This is gonna be painful, <laughs> so you have to let off. Cause this thing like, I think it needs whole mods now cause it is not stable. <laughs> you know, you're going, you're going and then any little like ripple in the water upsets it. Oh, and yeah. then when you let off the gas to slow down, then it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. So yeah. You happy with it? I love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you. I love to hear. Absolutely love it. It sounds aggressive. It has lots of snap. I'm stoked. Thank you. That's nice. So we just took a jet ski that for the better part of 15 years was dead nuts reliable and it became unreliable recently. Changed out the motor, changed out the jet drive, changed out the exhaust, and now not only is it reliable, but it's spunkier, more powerful, and scares the crap out of me to ride. I love it, it's perfect. It is not boring at all. And uh, I can't thank these guys enough. Nick, thank you for the backflips and all the wrenching. Mark. Thank you for everything you just did. And uh, if you guys have time and you want to see more content like this, go to Erickson Machine and Performance YouTube channel. Yeah, trust me, you're gonna love it.